Well, we start with the bin Laden raid because so we leave 10 years away from 9-11. A lot of things happened, you know, while, while bin Laden was hiding. So from bin Laden, we go into al-Baghdadi, then we go into Soleimani, and those are the three main players that we talk about. An excerpt from today's guest, whose new book details the hunt for terrorists after 9-11. New York Times bestselling author Martin Dugard is here to discuss the latest book in the Killing series, co-authored with Bill O'Reilly, Killing the Killers. And I'll speak with him right after this break. I'm Robert Child, and this is Point of the Spear. May 30th is Memorial Day in the United States, a day in which America honors her warriors. And my book, Immortal Valor, is out now. The book chronicles these immortal heroes' life journeys through all the pain and struggle until their ultimate triumphs. I hope you check out the book, available in stores and online, to discover more as we honor America's warriors this Memorial Day. Welcome back. Today's guest is a number one New York Times best-selling author and co-author of the Mega Million Selling Killing series. He's also launched a solo series, The Taking Series, that we'll discuss during the show. His new book is called Killing the Killers, The Secret War Against Terrorists. It came out yesterday, and best-selling author Martin DeGard joins us now. Marty, welcome back to the show. Rob, great to be here. It's uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you, sir. This book looks fantastic. And last time you were here, you said that you and Bill thought that the series would end at 10 books. What uh, what compelled you to write Killing the Killers? Um, you know, it's always Bill. Bill's the one who kind of comes up with the titles. And we just, you know, I think before this, the book before was uh, Killing the Mob, which did very well. Um, but we kind of felt like, you know, we, we've gotten away from the, the early premise of, you know, killing Lincoln, killing Kennedy, you know, those really hard hitting topics, but, and now it's much more complex. And I think, um, you know, and Bill just decided he wanted to do more, you know, we've, we've done, we're at a dozen now we did, we did another one after killers, but um, if this was a topic we hadn't touched just because, you know, terrorism is such, such a recent phenomenon. So this is the first book we actually had to do, a lot of reporting every you know the one of the luxuries of writing about like world war ii for instance is that pretty much you're it's it's recorded history in the, but in this book we had to kind of we had to do the history work no one's really written something like this before and um so there was a lot of reporting involved a lot of a lot of interviews a lot of um getting to know all the players and the ironic thing is the players don't want to be known the, you know the yeah. special forces want to be don't want to talk to you the the terrorists don't want to talk to you obviously and it, it's just what and you know the in the government policymakers spoke to us but only um as background yeah that was one of my questions uh, since so much material is classified it, it must have been a tough research project first and foremost was there anything you came across that that you discovered in the research that surprised or shocked you I think just the, I didn't really know how pervasive uh, the different uh, terrorist organizations, organizations were because we know the, you know, we know the Taliban, we know, uh, we know Al Qaeda, we know ISIS, but there, there's all these splinter groups, everybody's jockeying for power. And, um, and it's uh, the, the terrorism that we read about on the, you know, in the newspaper, we see on TV, it, it's so much more pervasive than that. And, um, it, and in that way, a little bit horrific. A lot of our source material um, came from places like the Tehran Times or, you know, some, you know, I, you know, we didn't use any Baghdad newspapers, but a lot of newspapers from the Middle East, because they had a different viewpoint on a lot of this. And it, it kind of shown a different light on mm. global terrorism. Now, this book happens, the story in this book happens after 9-11. Is there a, a major character that you follow in this story? Well, we start with the bin Laden raid because so we leave 10 years away from 9-11. And we, we go, you know, going forward from bin Laden. A lot of things happened, 
you know, other groups grew up while while Bin Laden was hiding. So, but we don't we 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 write about them, but only as as kind of a backdrop for everything else that goes on. So we we go from from Bin Laden, we go into Al Baghdadi, then we go, go into Soleimani, and um, and those are the three main players that we talk about. On Soleimani, did you bring it up to date with his uh, uh, assassination, essentially? That, that's a big part of it. Um, we we actually got to speak to some of the, you know, I can't give too much away because it's it's classified, um, but we, we got into the heads of some of the people who um, were present for some of the decision making. It was very, very helpful. Oh, really? Is, yeah. there, is there any footage that exists of uh, that raid or that? I haven't found any. You know, it 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 was a you know it was a it was a drone strike, um, and it took place at night. Um, but I haven't seen any footage. <laughs> I'd love to see footage. It's it, that's just one of the things about this book is that so much of it is um, just you know so much is hidden. So much is the stuff that isn't going to come out. For about, I'd like to go back to this book in 20 years, and just revisit some of the stuff to kind of fill in some of the blanks, or, or, yeah. you know, expand the narrative in a little bit because I think we're going to learn more in about you know the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah. Speaking of that, the war on terror itself. Do you believe that the the West has won that, or it has morphed into something else and gone underground? You know, one of the individuals we talked to who would not allow his name to be used, um, is very adamant that by leaving the Middle East, we have let this culture, um, you know, lie dormant for a while, but then it, it will pop up again. And then another one of the individuals we talked to was very specific that we don't belong in the Middle East and we can do a lot of this stuff now with special forces and with drone strikes and with uh, with partners. So the, the answer is complicated, but in the end, everybody thinks that this is going to continue. It's just the socioeconomic conditions make it much easier to make a living as a terrorist than to do several other things. And, and it's just, and these other groups continue to pop up. And it's not, we think of terrorism as being in the Middle East, but you know, it's spreading to, it's in, it's not just in North Africa anymore either. It's, it's in Southern Africa. It's, it's in the Philippines. It's, it's become a global thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's going anywhere. Right. Right. I would agree with that. Um, the series itself, you said you have a, another one coming out in the killing, killing series. How do you, you and Bill, choose topics for the series? Um, Bill sends me a text and says, "Hey, this is the next topic." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think about it that much. It's, um, you know, I've, I'm doing my own series now too, so um, I'm much more focused on getting that one. Which is not to say I'm not equally focused on killing books but you know bill has always come up with the topics and my job is to you know do the research do the writing you know make sure that the quality i think the quality of the series is better now than it was when we did the first two or three books and i think those are impeccable but the level of research has just expanded to a whole new realm that's great yeah it's a natural progression i would imagine it is I hope you're enjoying this episode. Next time, author Jared Frederick will be here to discuss his new book, Fierce Valor, the true story of Ronald Spears and his band of brothers. One of the the core elements of the book is his written correspondence with Dick Winters because that truly gave us an insider perspective, uh, perspectives in which they were very candid with each other about what they did and what they did not do during the Second World War. Uh, and so that was one of the really fascinating things is that you, you saw these older men coming to terms with their celebrity, celebrity that they were sometimes uncomfortable with. That's next time. May 30th is Memorial Day in the United States, a day in which America honors her warriors. And my book, Immortal Valor, is out now. The book chronicles these immortal heroes' life journeys through all the pain and struggle until their ultimate triumphs. I hope you check out the book, available in stores and online, to discover more as we honor America's warriors this Memorial Day. Now back to the conversation. Now that you mentioned that, uh, you do have a new book coming out uh, this fall. 
in in your new taking series, Taking Berlin. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, the taking series, you know, kind of backtrack. I mean, I really enjoy working with Bill, but all good things must come to an end. And whether it's now or, you know, five books from now, I want to position myself so I, you know, I can stand on my own two feet and have my own books out there. So I started this year with Taking Paris, which which uh, you, uh, Grace Lee, had me on the, the podcast earlier to discuss that. And, and that's about May 1942, um, August 1944. Taking Berlin literally picks up where uh, Paris lets off. And the way I originally wrote the first chapter was literally the liberation of Paris, uh, the victory parades, like the day after the other book ended. But I found that to tell the story for people who had not read Taking Paris, I, I, I went back to D-Day mm-hmm. and, I, and, I, and I broke it into, I've got four main characters. There's General James Gavin with the 82nd Airborne. We've got Martha Gellhorn, who's a journalist, you know, best known as Hemingway's wife. But I think in my mind, an even better writer than Hemingway. If you read her, her war reporting, it's brilliant. Um, we've got obviously Winston Churchill and then General, General Norman Coda, who was at the parade for the liberation of Paris, but he was also the hero of D-Day. He was the crazy guy walking up and down the beach while everybody's, you know, on their, you know, on the, hugging the sand. He's the guy telling everybody to get up and get off the beach. So <laughs> we followed those four people through, through the war. We spent a little bit of time with Rommel um, and we spend also a little bit of time with the Russians just to show what else, you know, to show the whole thing. But it's not, it's not your typical, you know, march to Berlin. It's really more about the, how, how people are approaching the war and how, you know, Patton is obviously a pivotal player and how the war just moves, you know, we advance the war, but we also talk about the personal side of it. This war correspondent you mentioned, the, the, this woman, she's the, the wife of Hemingway she she's his third wife third Martha wife. Gellhorn see that's the thing about Martha Gellhorn and and I'm guilty of it too when I started writing this book I just thought of her as Hemingway's wife and they were in the process of splitting up when Paris was liberated um, she on D-Day she didn't have the the press credentials to be on Omaha Beach so she smuggled herself onto a hospital ship locked herself into a bathroom until the the ship left port to sail towards the D-Day beaches, only came out just as they, as as the sun was rising and they were approaching Omaha Beach to pick up the wounded, and she went ashore. She helped you know get the wounded, bring them back to the ship. Um, she takes the ship back to Portsmouth, uh, where she's promptly arrested for being where she shouldn't be, which which becomes a habit throughout the war. She puts her, they take away all her credentials, all her ability to move around. And yet we find her at, at Market Garden, you know, the bridge too far. Mm-hmm. We find her flying in an airplane with with a bomber crew. It, all these different things. She's at Dachau when it's liberated. So, and her writing is just uh, is so perfect. And along the way, she has an affair with James Gavin. So all of a sudden we take this 37-year-old two-star general who's one of the few generals to actually jump into combat. And conveniently, he develops an infatuation with with this war correspondent and so they they're not side by side for the rest of the war but wh- wherever wherever there's a battle she seems to find it he seems to always be a part of it so it's 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 fascinating there's action there's also you know dare i say romance in a war book but it's it's pretty cool it sounds great uh, yeah. the reason i ask about her is in my research for immortal valor i came across a, a female war correspondent uh, and stringer Mm. who uh, reported um, from the push to Berlin. And she was a former journalist, and her husband was the reporter. And they went over, he went over to Normandy on the invasion, Bill Stringer, and was killed, uh, I believe, on the first day of the Normandy invasion uh, by a tank, German tank. So she took over his, Ann Stringer took over his, his duties and, and became embedded with, I believe it was the 12th division, but I'm, I'm not, I don't remember. But uh, it was amazing reading some of her accounts, and it surprised me that um, she was embedded yeah. with, with the army. <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of the the branches of the service had, you know, would not allow women to be in the frontline position. So for them to get there, they had to to find a way and you what's weird is you find these women who 
who do things like, you know, Gellhorn was not the first woman to fly in an aircraft, you know, a military aircraft over, you know, in, and she was not the first woman to get to Dachau. So these women were there. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know the, the commercial viability of a book just about women war reporters, World War II. And yet they're very exciting individuals. Right. I, I guess the trick would be finding the narrative. Yeah. Fearless. I would, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Um, Getting back to the the Killing series, you mentioned that you uh, have another book after after this book. Is it? Can you talk about that, or is it classified? I don't know if I can. I, okay. Let's just say that we, it's our first foray into pop culture. Um, the book is completed. It comes out in September, and it um, it's the first one that we've done where when I tell people about it, they go, wow, that's really cool. Like people kind of lean in, they want to read the books, which is very encouraging. Um, And I learned a lot too. That's one of the the great things about the Killing Book is you take a little snapshot of history and we we kind of, you know, do the deep dive. And next thing you know, you're learning about stuff that was just on the periphery of your awareness before. And all of a sudden you realize the importance of of this individual or that individual. Well, that sounds like a great tease for the book. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I could say more. I I, I understand, you know, things have to remain under wraps. I'll get a call. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Hey, the killing, you know, it's all, it's a good gig. You know, we don't, we don't want this to go away quite yet. Absolutely. And the book is called Killing the Killers, The Secret War Against Terrorists. Marty, thank you so much for coming on the show again. Yeah, Rob, this is fantastic. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. That's it for this episode. Thanks again for joining me. Next time, author Jared Frederick will be here to discuss his new book, Fierce Valor, the true story of Ronald Spears and his band of brothers. One of the the core elements of the book is his written correspondence with Dick Winters because that truly gave us an insider perspective, uh, perspectives in which they were very candid with each other about what they did and what they did not do during the Second World War. Uh, And so that was one of the really fascinating things is that you you saw these older men coming to terms with their celebrity, celebrity that they were sometimes uncomfortable with. That's next time. And if you like what you hear, leave a review or a rating or just click the follow button. And be sure to check out our Point of the Spear YouTube channel with bonus video material plus full military history documentaries. There's tons to explore, and I hope you check it out. I'm Robert Child, and this has been Point of the Spear. Music licensed from audioblocks.com. Point of the Spear is produced by RSC Media Group.